Welcome back to Market on Close. I'm Marley Caden. Let's turn our attention now to nuclear power and the huge demand for power needed for AI data centers, nuclear reactors, and more. Joining us to discuss this is Seth Gray, the president and CEO of Lightbridge. Now, Seth, thank you for being with us. I understand that you are joining us from the Senate today. What brought you to Capitol Hill? Well, we're meeting with senators today about Lightbridge's nuclear fuel technology. There's a lot of interest in Washington on nuclear power, particularly for AI data centers and also for um, for other uses of our fuel potentially, including for nuclear powered icebreaker ships. But mostly it's about the idea of using the Lightbridge fuel to produce even more power from the existing reactors and the data centers in particular need constant, reliable power that nuclear can provide. And how have the conversations gone so far? Well, they're going very well. We have a lot of support. We are uh, working mostly at Idaho National Laboratory where we've produced samples of these fuels, of the fuel. They're going through qualification now. We expect in the next few months they'll be in the test reactor at Idaho National Laboratory. And there's a lot of support on Capitol Hill, both for nuclear in general, uh, in a bipartisan way, and House Senate, as well as the administration, and specifically for the Lightbridge fuel. It was a very heartening meeting with the members of the Senate and the House and both parties on what we're doing. So many things I want to talk to you about, Seth, but I'll start with the importance of these nuclear powered icebreaker ships for the U.S. And you've said that Lightbridge Fuel has a very good option for us to start uh, having our own nuclear powered icebreaker ships. Why is that so important and how is Lighthouse potentially an integral part of that? So Russia has seven nuclear powered icebreaker ships. The U.S. has zero. And Russia is building some new, giant, more powerful ships. And China has defined itself as a near-Arctic country that is actually nowhere near the Arctic and is also going to be deploying nuclear-powered icebreaker ships. And unless the U.S. does this, we'll largely cede a lot of the Arctic to Russia and China. And we are an Arctic nation, particularly with uh, the state of Alaska. And we have many, many allies ringing the Arctic. And in terms of mineral mining, transversing uh, Navy ships, northern routes for shipping, uh, we will cede this to Russia and China if we really can't keep up. And what's happened with Lightbridge at Idaho National Lab is we've received what's called highly enriched uranium and have produced nuclear fuel samples out of it that will go in the reactor for much faster testing with this higher enrichment of uranium, higher than would be used in commercial reactors uh, just to get the testing done fast. But it turns out that this is about the enrichment of uranium that will be good for icebreaker ships, that the fuel we've already produced at Idaho National Laboratory and we're going to test, we think, would be really good for icebreaker ships and probably by far the fastest way for the U.S. to catch up with and surpass Russia and China. And is this this higher enrichment uranium what differentiates Lightbridge's fuel from competitors? Well, part of it in that our fuel can use such high enrichments. Now, for commercial fuel, we'll stay under 20% enriched, which is an international standard for everything below that is low enriched. And uh, But with that enrichment, the Lightbridge fuel will provide much more power and last longer than other fuels in reactors. But it's the ability of a variant of this fuel, like what we just produced with Idaho National Laboratory, to go to significantly higher enrichment levels than that. That's one of several technical reasons why we think it's so incredibly well suited for icebreaker ships so that the ships don't have to refuel, that they could go years and years and years under you know, tremendous power availability uh, with the higher enrichment in the fuel. Well, it certainly seems more efficient than having to go back and to refuel these ships. Um, I also want to talk to you about, you know, these executive orders that we've seen, this push for nuclear power, several of them signed to revitalize the nuclear industry here at home. One of them is calling to add five gigawatts of power um, 
through upgrades with reactors that are already operating. So as far as Lightbridge, how does your technology align with that goal? Beautifully. The Lightbridge Fuel's main advantage and the main interest of the utilities that we've we've always been talking to is that they can get more power out of their existing reactors or new ones using Lightbridge Fuel. So our fuel can take existing reactors up in power by about 17%. Uh, for some reactors, it'll it'll be less. For some, maybe even a bit more. But about 17% more power from an existing reactor with this kind of fuel versus the current kind of fuel. And for new build reactors, about a third more power. So you could build three reactors and get the power of four. So between the existing reactors and the new reactors, which do you see as the more immediate opportunity? Oh, the existing reactors, because there are hundreds of them around the world that have already been built, 94 of them are operating in the U.S. And like the executive orders say, this focus on the existing reactors to get more nuclear power before we're even building new reactors. And as we roll out Lightbridge fuel into existing reactors, uh, that will, uh, you know, we think help lead to new reactors being built with, with even greater benefit. And one of the major emphasis in the executive orders, and also I think concerns generally just from Americans, is this need for enhanced safety and some of the fear that's tied uh, to the deployment of nuclear energy and technology. Can you explain, I was reading a little bit in, in some of the Lightbridge notes, about how your fuel's design actually improves safety margins? Yeah, tremendously. And as we get to tripling nuclear globally, which is a goal the U.S. and many other countries have signed on to by 2050 to have that done, we're talking about potentially hundreds of new reactors being built in other countries that don't have them now, in the developing world, all over the world, and more than ever, it's going to be needed to have safety by design that those reactors, just the way they're operating, are, are safer. And the Lightbridge fuel operates about 1,000 degrees Celsius, about 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the current fuel does in reactors, even while providing much more power. And th this very high-tech fuel brings about tremendous safety advantages to reactors. And so we think it's very good for the reactors that already run in, in the U.S., but especially as new reactors are deployed around the world, that enhanced safety will, I think, be, be even more important. And we have to say goodbye soon, but while I still have a little bit of time left with you, Seth, I um, would love to talk just lastly about this concept of recycling this nuclear waste. I know a lot of people focused on nuclear waste and, you know, everyone has seen the movies, uh, but you now have a, a, a process that's being tested to potentially eliminate nuclear waste. Is that correct? Well, we believe that the current nuclear waste could be reprocessed and both the uranium and the plutonium could be reused in nuclear fuel. And the plutonium in particular, we believe the Lightbridge fuel could be used more efficiently than anything else to eliminate it while generating power from it. Um, you know, we have a study that's been done, an independent study that shows 5.5 times more plutonium disposition than the other concepts. So, so that's something else we are very seriously looking at. Well, certainly a fascinating time to be in nuclear. Seth, we appreciate you taking the time out of your extremely busy day down at the Senate to speak with us and best of luck in your talks going forward. That was Seth Gray, the president and CEO of Lightbridge Corp.